The Resurrection Peter's Epistles Number 20 By Dr. Robert D. Luganbill Translation of 1 Peter 1, 3 through 5 Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In His great mercy, He has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. Introduction The living hope to which we are reborn is the resurrection. God has sown His seed of truth in us, Matthew 13, Mark 4 and Luke 8, and consequently we have been born a second time, not by the flesh, but by the water of the Word of God and by the Holy Spirit's ministry of that message to us, John chapter 3, verse 5, 3, 8 and 4, 10. Through our faith in Jesus Christ, we have this new life in us now and we live in the confident expectation, or hope, that when our Lord appears, this eternal life within us will blossom into a new body in which we shall live with Him forever. This hope of ours is a living hope, because it looks forward to the experience of eternal life in an eternal body, the resurrection body. The resurrection. The doctrine of the resurrection was of special interest to Peter's first century audience. As we have seen from our initial studies, they were poor and persecuted. In their pain and suffering, a theme of extreme importance in Peter's epistles, it was thus all the more crucial for them to look forward to the time when they would no longer have to endure the problems and difficulties of this life. It is perhaps not too strong a statement that significant Christian growth is impossible without a certain amount of suffering. To grow spiritually, we must change our way of thinking to God's way, our priorities to God's priorities and our perspective to God's perspective. God uses suffering to help us change our way of looking at the world and at our life experiences. He uses it to help us learn to lean on Him. The biblical teaching of the resurrection of our earthly bodies into a marvelous eternal body is one of the focus points to which our new thinking must shift. With the eyes of hope, we can see that future day when our new body will be a reality. When the Apostle Paul addressed his audience on the Areopagus Hill at Athens in defense of his faith in their unknown God, the Athenian elite listened politely until Paul told them about the resurrection of Jesus Christ, Acts chapter 17, verse 22 to 34. At the mention of rising from the dead, some of the crowd put him off, some openly scoffed, and only a small few who found their hearts moved to seek God were compelled to listen further. Today, no less than it did some 2,000 years ago, the idea of a literal coming to life of the dead is a fundamentally divisive issue with those who are willing to believe on one side and those who are content to live their lives without God on the other. Belief in the resurrection is an absolutely vital component of our Christian faith because the entire point of that faith is our confidence in deliverance from death through resurrection following the pattern of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. As Paul puts it, if there were no resurrection, then neither was Christ resurrected. And if Christ were not resurrected, then all the teachings of Scripture are false and all of our faith is empty and void. Furthermore, Paul, in company with all those apostles and witnesses to Christ's resurrection, would be found to be false witnesses against God, if Christ had indeed not been resurrected. If there truly were no such thing as resurrection from the dead, then Christ could not have been resurrected, and so our faith would be completely in vain, for we would still be accountable for our sins. Those who have died before us would truly have perished. If we were indeed only living for the here and now, if there were no prospect of life after death, if our hope of eternal life were a false one destined to die with us, then we Christians would certainly be most worthy of pity in this life. 1 Corinthians 15, 12 through 19. To put it succinctly, resurrection is the only way we can triumph over death. Therefore, resurrection based upon faith in Him who overcame death is the ultimate goal of our Christian hope. For our hope rests upon the promise that God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, so that those who were willing to follow His Son might have the opportunity to be victorious over death through resurrection, a renewal of life, even life everlasting. John chapter 3 verse 16. The Christian virtue of hope 
naturally focuses in on the blessed future that has been promised to all believers. No matter how scorching the burden of the day, or how heavy the load we carry in this life, we can look forward in confidence to the blessed hope of joy and relief that accompanies the glorious appearance of our Lord Jesus Christ. Titus chapter 2, verse 13. Part of that hope is the anticipation of the conquest of evil and the wonders of the kingdom of heaven, which our Lord will establish on his return. But another large part of the hope mentioned by Titus is our anticipation of receiving a glorious, incorruptible new body in which we shall dwell with the Lord forever. It is for this reason we esteem all earthly things of less value than the attainment of the resurrection, Philippians chapter 3 verse 8 through 11, that we strive to perfect our Christian walk of virtue and enter the kingdom without stumbling, 2 Peter 1 8 through 11, and that we set our minds on heavenly things, looking forward to the transformation of our present, humble bodies to a new reality in keeping with our true citizenship, which is heavenly, not earthly, Philippians chapter 3 verse 15 through 21. The Nature of the Resurrection Resurrection is an essential part of our future status. Without the resurrection, eternal life would be impossible, for flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. 1 Corinthians 15.50 We pass our lives here on earth in this body of flesh, but our true citizenship is in heaven. Philippians chapter 3 verse 20 and 21 And we are confident that just as we now bear the form of earthly flesh, as did our Lord, we shall one day bear the heavenly form of our resurrected Lord Jesus Christ, 1 Corinthians 15, 49. Resurrection must be distinguished from resuscitation. It is important to note that by resurrection we mean an eternal, unchangeable status, not a temporary return to this same earthly body we now inhabit. When Christ brought Lazarus back from the dead, it was a temporary return, and Martha was correct in her assumption that the final resurrection of her brother would have to await the last day. But part of God the Father's validation of our Lord's earthly ministry on earth included the raising of the dead, Luke chapter 7 verse 22, and all of the people so raised by Christ and the apostles still await their final resurrection bodies, Luke chapter 7 verse 11 through 17. Incidentally, we can see the resuscitation of Lazarus fulfilling part of its purpose in the Gospel of John, for we are told that word of that miracle was the reason for the huge crowd awaiting our Lord on Palm Sunday, John chapter 12, verse 17 and 18. A similar phenomenon is the temporary resuscitation of believers who had died immediately prior to our Lord's crucifixion. By bringing them back to life temporarily, God validated after the fact for all to see the efficacy of his Son's work on the cross for us all, Matthew chapter 27, verse 52 and 53. Resurrection must be distinguished from transmutation. A very small number of believers ended their lives in a most unusual way. Enoch, Moses and Elijah are examples of believers who were transmuted, that is, who did not experience the death of their physical bodies. These three men were all transferred to eternity apart from death. In the case of Moses and Elijah, though the specific circumstances of their departures differ, the reason apparently has to do with their eventual return for further service at the time of the tribulation, Revelation chapter 11, verse 1 through 13. Despite their unusual departures from life, Enoch, Moses and Elijah still await their resurrection bodies, along with all the departed believers.